beside them to follow Jesus. Ashpapi and his gang were having the time of their lives, living life in the fast lane, luxury cars, designer clothes, $900 desserts, and an online legion of starstruck followers. But the FBI was also patiently building its cases against the gang. On the night his apartment at the Palazzo Versace was raided in an operation codenamed Fox Hunt 2, a bus was arrested alongside 11 others in six simultaneous raids. To beat the serious charges leveled against him, Ashpapi needed an experienced lawyer cut for the cloth. He needed an attorney that understood international cybercrime laws and operations of BEC scams. One of such attorneys was Louis Shapiro. When U.S. attorney Luis Shapiro was hired by Abbas Ramon, he got down to work. The first order of business was to get the trial date extended so that he could have ample time to prepare his client's defense. On 9th March 2021, the attorney filed an application requesting additional time for his client, Hashpapi. His application read, Specifically, in light of the foregoing and the complexity of the discovery and allegations in this case, counsel for defendant also represents that additional time is necessary to confer with defendant, conduct and complete an independent investigation of the case, conduct and complete additional legal research including for potential pretrial motions, review the discovery and potential evidence in the case, and prepare the trial in the event that a pretrial resolution does not occur. Defense counsel represents that failure to grant the continuance will deny him reasonable time necessary for effective preparation, taking into account the exercise of due diligence. Louis Shapiro argued that if the court failed to extend the trial date, it would be doing injustice to his client Abbas Ramon by denying him adequate representation. The judge handling the case, Otis Wright, accepted the application and extended Hashpapi's trial date by two months to July 2021. After carrying out the due diligence and going through the evidence discovery process that the United States Attorney's Office had, Hashpapi's lawyer, Mr. Louis Shapiro, realized that his client was fighting a losing battle. The United States Attorney's Office had built a watertight case that placed Abbas and his co-conspirators at multiple points of BEC fraud through a string of digital footprints that took them in Nigeria to the US, Dubai to North Korea. Shapiro understood that the case was going to be difficult to win. Therefore, he turned to his next best chip, a plea bargain. The attorney advised Abbas Ramon to plead guilty to the offenses and strike a deal with the United States Attorney's Office for a lighter sentence. Hashpapi pondered over this. He had had a short run as an Instagram influencer hotshot, but Johnny Law had finally caught up with him. The chips were down and things were not looking good for him. In July 2021, Mr. Abbas agreed to plead guilty to the multi-million dollar fraud charges preferred against him by the American government. He had been in detention for over a year since his arrest in Dubai and extradition to the U.S. in June 2020. A Nigerian Instagram influencer who posted pictures of his lavish lifestyle could spend the next 20 years in a prison cell. Ramon Abbas, a.k.a. Hush Puppy, has pleaded guilty to money laundering in a U.S. federal court. Hush Puppy pleaded guilty to count two, 
which is conspiracy to engage in money laundering. This offense attracts a maximum imprisonment of 20 years, among other punishments, including paying full restitution to the victims of the scam. A section of the plea agreement drafted by Mr. Louis Shapiro and the United States Attorney's Office read as follows. Defendant understands that the defendant will be required to pay full restitution to the victims of the offense to which the defendant is pleading guilty. Defendant agrees that in return for the United States Attorney's Office compliance with its obligations under the agreement, the court may order restitution to persons other than the victims of the offense to which defendant is pleading guilty and in amounts greater than those alleged in the count to which defendant is pleading guilty. Since Hash Papi was not an American citizen, he will be deported back to Nigeria after completing his jail term and paying up the amount to be restituted. For the charges brought against him, Hash Papi was facing a 20 years imprisonment, a 3 year period of supervised release, a fine of half a million dollars or twice the gross gain or gross loss resulting from the offense, whichever is greater, and a mandatory special assessment of $100. On 7th July 2021, Hash Papi's trial began. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Central District of California presented its case to court in July 2021. The prosecution detailed the role that Abbas played in defrauding multiple parties of hundreds of thousands of dollars between 18th January 2019 through to 9th June 2020. According to the prosecution, Hashpapi knowingly conspired and worked with other players to conduct financial wire fraud within and outside the United States. The co-conspirators named during the trial included Abdul Rahman Imran Juma, Kelly Chibuzo Vincent, Abba Kiari, Rukayat Motunraya Fashola, Bolatito Tawakalitu Agagbaika, Yusuf Adenkinka Anifowoshe, among others. According to the United States Attorney's Office, Hashpapi and his gang targeted multiple victims and laundered the funds that they obtained fraudulently. Hashpapi was also accused of fraudulently obtaining money through bank cyber heists, business email compromise frauds, and other fraud schemes. The victims of Hashpapi's scam included a bank based in Malta, a law firm located in New York City, and two companies located in the United Kingdom. The United States issued a warrant of arrest for the then Nigeria's Deputy Commissioner, Abba Kiari, over his role in facilitating the crime. The U.S. government wanted Kiari to be extradited to the U.S. to face wire fraud charges and other conspiracies. However, on 29th August 2022, a federal court in Abuja, Nigeria, dismissed a request by the Nigerian government to have Mr. Kiari extradited. The judge responsible for the case, Emeka Nwite, said Nigeria's Attorney General Abubakar Malami was responsible for the failure of the case by instituting the extradition process despite the pending criminal case against Mr. Kiari in Nigeria. The Federal High Court in Abuja has dismissed a suit instituted by the federal government seeking to extradite suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police Abba Kiari to the United States of America. The judgment of uh, the Honorable Court, Federal High Court, presided by Honorable Justice Equo, is to the effect that the application for extradition, as made by the Honorable Attorney General of Federation, was brought in bad faith. It was not brought, brought seriously. It was an attempt to wink and attack our client. And uh, it's incompetent and it was dismissed and was struck out and dismissed together on the merits too. That there's no merit in it. Mr. Kiari and three other police officers were being tried on charges bordering on cocaine trafficking. Back to Hashpapi's trial in the United States. The prosecution detailed how the wire fraud conspiracies were conducted. For instance, 
in some business email compromise schemes involving companies in the United Kingdom, Abbas and another co-conspirator, Galid Alumari, conspired on how to fraudulently obtain about £6 million per week in May of 2019. Once a victim deposited funds into a bank account, Hashpapi will coordinate with other co-conspirators to obtain or remove the money. The team will then proceed to launder the funds through different ways. The prosecution alleged that Mr. Abbas had admitted to being involved in a scheme to defraud a Qatari businessman that was building an international school. According to the information presented in court, Abbas began working with another co-conspirator, Abdul Rahman Imran Juma, in December 2019. Abbas and Juma will go on and defraud the Qatari businessman hundreds of thousands of dollars in pretense that they could help him secure a lender who would invest $15 million towards building the international school. Juma was said to have already defrauded the Qatari businessman of hundreds of thousands of dollars before Abbas joined him in the scheme. According to evidence submitted by the prosecution, in December 2019, Hashpapi began communicating with the Qatari businessman by using the name Mr. Malik. Playing the role of Mr. Malik, a bank manager of a Wells Fargo bank in the US, Hashpapi falsely told the victim that he would open a bank account in the United States where the $15 million loan could initially be deposited. However, in truth, Hashpapi and Juma did not intend to assist the businessman in securing a loan. Rather, they were simply defrauding him. In court, Hashpapi did not provide a long defense since he had agreed to take a plea again. He told the U.S. Central District Court in California that the U.S. Attorney's Office agreed to recommend a lighter sentence following his admission to the crimes. However, Hashpapi's lawyer, Louis Shapiro, was determined to secure a lighter sentence for his client. The attorney chronicled Hashpapi's family background and described him as a devout husband, father, and son to his family. Giving details of Mr. Abbas' three children, who live with their mothers in London, New York, and Dubai, the defense attorney said that his children depended on Abbas for continued support. He also added that Ashpapi came from a good family and had not had any prior run-ins with the law. Mr. Shapiro highlighted Hashpapi's entrepreneurial skills. He noted that Hashpapi worked hard and created opportunities for himself by pursuing his dreams of having a personal business. The lawyer explained that Abbas's decision to plead guilty in the case had forced his ailing parents to move to secret locations due to the danger they have been exposed to in Nigeria. Putting forth arguments to sway the court in granting a lesser sentence, the defense attorney said Hashpapi had a young family who looked up to him to provide. The lawyer said that Hashpapi was not aware of how many persons were involved in the fraudulent scheme as well as the extent of the monetary scheme. He argued that the fraud that Hashpapi became entangled in was already in operation prior to his involvement. According to Luis Shapiro, the wire fraud scheme was being spearheaded by Galid Alumari and other players in North Korea with whom Mr. Abbas had no knowledge of. The attorney disclosed how Hashpapi was approached by Mr. Alumari, who was an old friend. Alumari had then asked Abbas to procure bank account information. The attorney admitted that the bank account information Hashpapi provided were to be used to wire transfer funds that had been fraudulently obtained. However, he argued that Abbas did not know the extent of the fraud. He was simply a small fish thrown into a large pan of hot oil. Mr. Shapiro highlighted Abbas' cooperation with law enforcement agents when he was arrested. He said that Abbas was cooperative sincerely remorseful and did not pose any threat to be a repeat offender. 
for his final submission, Mr. Shapiro pleaded. Based on Mr. Abbas' lack of criminal history, his extraordinary work ethic, his unconditional acceptance of responsibility, and his minimal risk of recidivism, a departure and variation below the sentencing guidelines will be sufficient to reflect on the seriousness of the offense to deter future crimes. The attorney requested the court to impose a sentence below the statutory guidelines range. He pleaded that nobody benefited from Mr. Abbas continuing languishing in prison, not his family, not his parents, and not the society. After listening to submissions from both the prosecution and the defense sides, the trial judge, Otis Wright, set Hashpapi's sentencing to 7th November of 2022. Ahead of the sentencing, a team of U.S. attorneys, led by Stephanie Christensen, urged the court to sentence Hashpapi to 135 months imprisonment. However, Hashpapi fought back through his lawyer, Louis Shapiro, with a court filing. In the filing, Hashpapi said the U.S. attorney's office had agreed to a shorter prison sentence below the calculated range dictated by statute. Mr. Shapiro asked the court to overlook the statute sentencing guidelines and factor in what his client Hashpapi and the United States Attorney's Office had agreed to in the plea bargain agreement. The defense lawyer also highlighted that Mr. Abbas had showed an early acceptance of responsibility for the fraud. He pleaded that his show of remorse should be taken into account during sentencing. He further added that Hashpapi had suffered tremendously during his two-year stint in prison and had even contracted COVID. Mr. Shapiro asked the court to reduce Abbas' sentence to a maximum of three and a half years. According to the attorney, the reduction will also enable Mr. Abbas to continue supporting his family in their time of need. Meanwhile in Kenya, Abdul Rahman Imran Juma had been in custody of the authorities for his alleged involvement in international wire fraud. On 23rd September 2022, the country's court ordered the extradition of Juma to the United States to face money laundering charges like his Nigerian co-conspirator Ramon Abbas. Milimani Chief Magistrate Wendy Micheni granted the orders allowing U.S. authorities to open charges of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, money laundering, and aggravated identity theft against Mr. Juma. Juma had been inducted as part of an international fraud scheme that conspired to swindle the Qatari businessman that was looking for a $15 million loan to finance the construction of an international school in Qatar. According to court papers, Juma orchestrated the scheme that saw the businessman lose over a hundred thousand US dollars. A report from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution in Kenya read as follows. The fugitive is said to be part of a syndicate that orchestrated a scheme with his co-conspirators who are already before the United States District Court for the Central District of California to defraud a victim who was seeking a lender to invest in a project to build a school. But before this hearing, Juma had protested through his lawyers against being extradited to the U.S. on the pretext that he would not receive a fair trial. But while issuing the orders, the judge maintained that there was no evidence to show that Juma would not receive a fair trial in the U.S. Through his lawyers, Juma lodged an application seeking to reverse the orders, but the prosecution opposed his bid to extend his bail term. According to court papers filed in the U.S., Juma worked with Hashpapi to defraud the Qatari tycoon. He allegedly built the entire network and brought the Nigerian influencer on board, hatched the idea in Nairobi before pitching it to Hashpapi, who gladly accepted it. Hashpapi went ahead to recruit other individuals from Nigeria, including Deputy Police Commissioner Abba Kiari. On 12 November 2019, 
the Qatari businessman and his financial advisor, traveled to Kenya to meet Mr. Juma in person. During the meeting, the businessman signed a contract with Juma's company. The contract stipulated that the businessman will pay Juma's firm a consultancy fee of 190,000 US dollars through Okats and Partners, a law firm located in Kenya. Since his arrest, Abbas had had time to reflect on his mistakes. In a final appeal to Judge Otis Wright, ahead of his scheduled sentencing in November, Ashpapi wrote a personal letter to the court narrating his source of wealth, criminal adventure, and regrets. He apologized to his family members for bringing them shame while commending the FBI for doing a thorough job while bringing him to justice. In a handwritten letter to the judge, Abbas detailed his two years in detention. Since I have been incarcerated, I have had enough time to reflect on the past and I regret letting greed ruin the good name of my family, my blessings, and my name. Abbas' letter to Judge Wright detailed how his co-conspirators reached out to him to pinpoint businesses to scam or request banking information to transfer funds that had been fraudulently obtained. Abbas wrote, Your Honor, I make no excuse for my actions and I take full responsibility for what I've done. If I could turn back the hand of time, I would make an entirely different decision and be more careful in the choices and friends I make. 11th October 2022 was Abbas Ramon's 40th birthday and just a month to his sentencing. Away from the glitz and glamour of social media influencers, we can only imagine how Abbas was feeling. But in the free world, Abbas' best friend, Sikuru Adekoya, was thinking about him. This will be Hashpapi's third birthday behind bars. Sikuru Adekoya, popularly known as Park, paid tribute to Hashpapi from a place of hope and pain in his heart. Taking to Instagram, he stated that he believed Hashpapi will be freed and they will be soon reunited. He wrote, Dear Raman, I write you from a place of hope and pain. The hope that as your verdict draws close and pronouncement kick starts, our reunion is made possible and the pain that comes with every day knowing that you are in there. Raman, it's your third birthday behind God bars. I pray that you continue to find strength and I pray for peace from within that powers you into greatness. On social media, where Abbas had posted videos of himself tossing words of cash like confetti, he referred to himself as a real estate developer. But federal investigators said he financed his extravagant lifestyle through online hacking schemes that netted more than $24 million. His targets included a US law firm, a foreign bank, and an unnamed British professional soccer club, among others. Martin Estrada, a United States attorney, said the following. Money laundering and business email compromise scams are a massive international crime problem and we will continue to work with our law enforcement and international partners to identify and prosecute those involved wherever they may be. Abbas alleged cyber crimes involved jaw dropping amounts of money. Federal documents detailed how Abbas and a co-conspirator fraudulently induced a New York law firm to wire nearly $923,000 went for a client's real estate refinancing to a bank account they controlled. A paralegal at the firm received fraudulent wire instructions after sending an email to what appeared to be a legitimate bank email address but was later identified as a spoofed address. In such a business email compromise scam, Criminals mimic an email message or website to make their communication appear like it's from a known source making a request such as a money transfer. Abbas also confessed to a conspiracy to defraud the Qatari businessman 
of more than $1 million. In 2021, acting United States Attorney Tracy L. Wilkinson said in a statement, the defendants allegedly faked the financing of a Qatari school by playing the roles of bank officials and creating a bogus website in a scheme that also bribed a foreign official to keep the elaborate pretense going after the victim was tipped off. On 8th November 2022, Ramon Abbas, the social media influencer who flaunted a lavish lifestyle of private jets and luxury cars, was sentenced to 11 years in prison over charges related to a multi-million dollar scam that targeted companies in the United States and other countries. Abbas, known to his millions of Instagram followers as Ray Hash Papi, had pleaded guilty in April 2021 to conspiracy to engage in money laundering. In addition to the prison sentence handed down, U.S. State District Judge Otis D. Wright ordered a bus to pay $1.7 million in restitution to two fraud victims. It was a spectacular downfall for a bus whose arrest in June 2020 at his gilded patch in Dubai made headlines worldwide. Before his sentencing, a bus was held in federal detention in Los Angeles. His swan's flamboyant social media account went quiet despite gaining half a million new followers since his arrest. One of his co-conspirators, Galid Alumari, had pleaded guilty in November 2020 to one count of conspiracy to engage in money laundering. Alumari was also sentenced to 11 years in federal prison and ordered to pay more than $30 million in restitution. Hashpapi's social media account was a treasure trove of information for investigators. Federal investigators described Abbas as a prolific money launderer who leveraged his social media platform to gain notoriety and brag about his wealth. Abbas made no secret about his opulent lifestyle. Before his arrest, he called himself the billionaire Gucci master on Snapchat. Started out my day having sushi down on Nobu in Monte Carlo, Monaco then decided to book a helicopter to have facials at the Christian Dior Spa in Paris, then ended my day having champagne in Gucci. He wrote in a photo caption on Instagram in 2020. Photos of a bus posing with multiple models of Bentley, Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz and Rolls-Royce cars included the hashtag AllMine. Others showed him rubbing elbows with international sports stars and other celebrities. In a 2020 affidavit, federal officials detailed how his social media accounts provided the details they needed to confirm his identity. The registration and account security information associated with his Instagram profile, for example, included an email address and phone number. Federal officials accessed that information and were able to link the email and phone number to financial transactions and transfers with people that the FBI believed were his co-conspirators. Even a bus Instagram birthday party photos helped the investigation. One such post displayed a birthday cake topped with a Fendi logo and a miniature image of a bus surrounded by tiny shopping bags. Investigators used that post to verify the date of birth he had used on a previous US visa application. In June 2020, United Arab Emirates investigators swooped into a bus apartment at the exclusive Palazzo Versace Resort in Dubai, arrested him, and handed him over to FBI agents. Investigators at the scene seized nearly $41 million, 13 luxury cars worth $6.8 million, and phone and computer evidence, including the email addresses of nearly 2 million possible victims. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings in my life. Continue to shame those waiting for me to be shamed. A bus captioned an Instagram picture of a Rolls Royce just two weeks before his dramatic arrest. His Instagram account 
has since been taken down. Like Jo Jang, Hashpapi must have asked, in the end, was it worth it? So in the end, was it worth it? Jesus Christ, how irreparably changed my life has become. It's always the last day of summer and I've been left out in the cold with no door to get back in. I'll grant you, I've had my share of poignant moments. Life passes most people by while they're making grand plans for it. Throughout my life, I've left pieces of my heart here and there, and now there's almost not enough to stay alive. But I force a smile, knowing that my ambition far exceeded my talent.